Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast with Latif Mikado, and I'm Latif Mikado. We are on episode 25, and I just want to thank you guys for hanging in there, everybody who's been logging on and listening and leaving comments, whether you're listening to uh, listening to it, uh, the podcast through um, uh, the Anchor Station, um, or maybe... Uh, through Spotify or iTunes or whatever, I do appreciate it. We also, um, every day, so tonight's the 20, this is the 25th, so tomorrow morning, I will be uploading this episode on YouTube. So you go on YouTube, go to uh, Goodnight Freestyle, and just type in my name, or just go to my name, Latif McCown, and then type in Goodnight Freestyle, and you'll find the whole playlist, and you can catch up. What's cool with that is you can send the links, uh, you can share the links to, um, if people don't have the app, for any any of the apps for the players uh so you can share those links so it's pretty cool so i just want to thank all of you who have been tuning in also everybody who's been going onto the website and checking out some of the other links i have in there if you don't know i mentioned this uh a couple of times before so i have a blog i have the vlogs the vlogs are cool because if you're into promotions or being an artist road manager manager um uh i got information in there that can probably help you and that we will continue we have a quite a few um episodes of that um also my blog you can check out the blog it says it's also on the website you can check out um that i do uh every once in a while i'll write down some of the thoughts that i have some of it pertains to freestyle some isn't some some of it is uh just spontaneous thoughts almost like the way this podcast is you know sometimes i have things on my mind i just want to kind of get them off my chest and these are some great mediums for me to do that. Um, sometimes I could, you know, read back or listen back uh, to them, and um, they become pretty therapeutic for myself. So they help me, um, and that's really the main thing. I'm, I'm trying to get, you know, do things that you know help inspire me, in hopes that it also inspires you as well. So uh, I don't know what anybody's going through. I don't know what what questions you might have, or if there's any kind of issues. Um, so all I can do really is deal with issues that I've gone through or that I am currently going through and hopefully it can, um, uh, it's, it reaches out to the right people and someone might, you know, find some sort of value in it. Um, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer whatever questions you have. Um, we will be releasing, we're supposed to release, um, the Facebook page for Goodnight Freestyle. Um, but I think I'm going to wait until we get to episode 30. That way we'll get at least the January month in. Um, and then I'll open it up. And we have all the episodes already being laid in there. So it's it's pretty much ready to go. We're just going to get these few more episodes in there. And then we're going to release it. That's a good place because then we can communicate. And most of the audience that we deal with, uh, well, the Freestyle audience, is on Facebook. So I want to you know, make sure we had a platform there for us to discuss anything that I might be talking about. Whether there's stuff you agree with or maybe that you don't agree or maybe there's something that I, I touched on but you would like to get more information and you know, I could dive a little deeper and if it can help you guys out, well, then that would be a great thing. You know, I really appreciate that. Also on the website, you have a connection. There's a, a link directly to La Radio Live. If you haven't checked that out, you might want to check that out. It plays Freestyle 24-7. I know that there's other stations uh, that do the same. However, we were the first 24-7 iRadio station for Freestyle. We opened up in 2003. Um, and there was a guy who had a, uh, he used to play like a four-hour mix, like once a week or once a month. I forgot and I remember everybody used to tune in. We used to have uh, just regular dial-up. So it was all, you know, the cord, the connections into the phone lines and so on. Um, and we used to sit there and we used to all listen in. And while people were listening in, they used to be on my uh, my chat room. I had, not chat room, I had um, uh, a message board. So it was real cool. It was very, very active uh, message board. Um, 
So I remember asking the guy, I was like, hey man, I'm, I'm actually, I'm interested in doing something like that. I like to do like an internet radio station. I don't even think they, they, they called it that. They called it like a, I don't know, show, a mixed show. I forgot what they used to call it back then, but I wanted to call it a radio station. And um, so he was like, well, what do you want? How many hours do you want? I said, well, to be honest, I don't, if I do it, I was like 24 seven. He was like, whoa. <laughs> and back then it was pretty expensive, you know? I mean, it wasn't bank breaking, but it was a hell of a lot more expensive than it is now. Um, and then you were limited. There was a lot of stuff you were limited. You were limited by, you know, how you're gonna deliver it to people. Uh, the portals, we had to create a portal so people could uh, uh, link on and listen. Um, and then it was the bandwidth issues. Uh, and then it was how many people can log on. Like if, I mean, we used to get a lot of people. Uh, remember I was on the road with little Susie back then. Uh, was that on the road with Angel yet? Yeah. You know what? I was on the road with Angel also. So we were pretty busy. I was all over the place and we were opening up a lot of doors everywhere. Um, and we were inviting DJs in from so many different cities and then they were promoting in their areas and they were promoting hard. So we used to get a really, really great following. I mean, thousands of people I literally used to log on, but it's because we were the only ones, you know, now it's hard to get those numbers, even though we're still focused on, we got a few things up our sleeve that we're, we're gonna start trying to implement this year. So you really wanna stay tuned. Um, in the meantime, we've been really, really focusing. Uh, the, the, our program director, like forever, has been Fernando Hernandez. Um, if you guys have any mixes or you guys want to get down in some capacity, he goes under Hot Mix. So you could go Fernando Hot Mix Hernandez. Uh, he's on Facebook. You can find him there. Or just go to La Radio Live and send him a message through there or just post something. He'll see it. He'll respond to you. So if you think if there's something you think you'd like to get down, I would suggest that. I would, I would really consider it because of the ideas that we have and the things that we plan on doing. But what we've been doing all this time is we've been really creating a really solid platform. So if you listen to um, our playlist, you'll see it's really tight. Um, everything's done professionally. You know, we don't just take records and throw them on. They're really, they're edited. They're, they're put together the right way. We have the right amount of time. Uh, and we got a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to start featuring this podcast also uh, on La Radio Live on the after hours. So it's going to be like, I guess, after midnight on Eastern time. I'm not really sure. He'll be advertising it soon. So you might want to check that out. It might be pretty cool. <clears throat> uh, so we'll be doing that. <clears throat> also, um, uh, uh, um, yeah, so anyway, well, what happened was we ended up doing the station. Uh, we did 24-7, and um, we were the only ones at that time. I mean, everybody knew about the station. I remember being in Hawaii, and someone came up to me, and they said, hey, they met me, and they were like, hey, man, you got to check out the station you guys got in the in the in the states you know called la radio live and i was you know i was laughing and you know i feel bad i never told them that i actually owned the station because it just i i just was kind of i think he found out later on because we're actually still in touch you know so um but it, it was pretty cool you know that he you know that it was reaching out to hawaii man hawaii so um and that was that showed me at that point the power of internet radio, and that's why I've always maintained the station. Um, around 2000, I don't know, 2006 maybe, we started to try to put together a first app. Now, the only phone that we had, I could have the dates wrong, so just correct me if I'm off a little bit, just gotta push the dates up. <clears throat> I had a Blackberry at that time, and it's when I first um, figured out how to deal with um, how to deal with uh, apps. And I wanted to create, I had this idea. I wanted to create an app specifically for La Radio to play on the Blackberry. Now, this was my whole idea. I don't know if you guys remember this. They still have them. Actually, I've seen them in the dollar store. And this would have been crazy. Do you know those cassettes? Do you remember when you had like a CD Walkman? You could take a cassette, they had this, this this cassette with a long wire, you pop the cassette into your car radio, okay, your car cassette uh, player, then you take the wire and you put it in the earphone jack of your Walkman and you were able to play the music from your Walkman out through your speakers in your car. So I'm sure you guys remember that. 
So that gave me an idea, okay, when I, um, when I, when I thought about that. What I wanted to do is I wanted to create an app on, because I knew that drive time was a powerful time to have a radio station, okay? Because just like um, regular radio, traditional radio, if you want to buy advertising and you want to uh, buy it during like the drive time, it's very expensive during that time because a lot of people listen to the radio at that time. Well, they used to. Um, now they probably still do. If not, they're listening to their phones. But no matter what, that's really a downtime that people can use to, especially if you're driving, you can't really read anything. So, you can, you know, you got to listen to stuff, listen to the radio, listen to music, listen, you know, audio books, speeches, whatever, whatever you do. I read, I listen to a lot of motivational stuff. I put that on my YouTube. I kind of just prop my phone up on the dashboard and I could drive for hours listening to that stuff, you know, well, not really for hours, more like 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm not much of a driver. I, I think I spoke about that yesterday. But anyway, um, so my idea was to create this app, right, for La Radio. I wanted the La Radio Live logo, which if you look at it, it looks like the regular La Entertainment logo, except it doesn't have the A. It just has the L, the fancy L. And and that's the, the, uh, the logo for the app. And then uh, what I wanted to do is put that on the BlackBerry. So... I didn't know how to go about doing that back then. They didn't have programs like they have now that you can just kind of go in and do it yourself. You had to actually get someone to program it. So I went onto Craigslist and I started doing some research and I ended up putting an ad uh, looking for an IT guy, somebody to help me out in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. And I found this guy. His name was it Itadel or something like that. He was an Indian guy. So he contacts me, calls me, and we talk for a little while and I tell him exactly what I want. And he wanted to charge me $1,000 for the app. I said, okay, not bad, not bad idea, okay. So he came over, I paid him the first half, and he started to piece everything together um, for me. Um, actually, he came over a couple times. I think the first time he came to show me um, that he had all the coding in place. It was show me how it works. Uh, it was on his BlackBerry. And it would show me how everything, but then what happens is you have to get it approved at that time by BlackBerry or I guess wherever you bought. I, I, I was, it's, it wasn't like it is now. It was different. You have to get these other approvals. Even though now, even now with your apps, you got to get the iTunes approval. iTunes are a pain, man. Android is a little easier. iTunes are a pain. Anybody who has an app, a real app, uh, will, will um, vouch for that. <laughs> but anyway, so he came back with the coding in the phone so all it was was all these links you could click on the link and you could hear the station it was really really cool so he popped this he brought a speaker or whatever he popped it in we were able to listen to it so i said this is cool so now all he had to do is he had to now take that coding and turn it into you know something where you know the actual app so it looks like the little the little logo so i was excited so i gave him the fi first five hundred dollars um and he got to work on that and we were communicating for a while and he was supposed to come over and finish up. We we're supposed to finish up that uh, one particular day and I was supposed to pay him the balance. So I was really excited. Plus he was gonna maintain it for me for you know, a real small fee. It wasn't really, it was maybe a hundred dollars a month. It wasn't much at all. Um, and I was waiting for him and then he didn't show up. So, uh, you know, I kind of brushed it off. I, I remember being busy that day. I was like, ah, oh, that's cool, man. He'll come by. Hopefully he comes by tomorrow. So I waited a couple of days. I noticed he didn't call. So I called him and he never got back to me. So I waited another day or two and I called him again. And then I started calling him every day. This went on for over a week. And then finally, I was calling him multiple times a day. And now I was getting a little hostile. So... I was upset. So in my mind, this dude took my $500 and dipped. Meanwhile, it looked like the, the app was working. So I'm like, why would he jerk me for $500? I, was, I had another, 100 here, another $500 here. You know, I was going to be $1,000. And I, I didn't understand it. So by this time, I'm calling him. I'm actually cursing this dude out. And it wasn't because of the money. It was because I was so excited about this thing. And I felt like for once... In my life, I was gonna, it was going to be a breakthrough for me. Like, instead of following the trends, I'm going to actually be ahead of the trends. And I was really, really psyched on this. And this is really, this is before Pandora. This is before iHeartRadio. I'm talking about, this is, this was crazy. And I knew that if I can get that drive time 
that I can sell advertisement on the station. I said, and you know, and I deal with all these promoters, so it just made sense. I'm like, wow, these promoters can really, really juice this. I could, and I could get paid, man. I mean, this could be a really good deal. So I had all these plans. I was freaking excited, and this dude just wouldn't return my call. Then finally, I get a call from a woman. Let me drink some water. Hold on. I get a call from this woman. And she says, Latif? I said, yes. She goes, how you doing? My name is Sharon. I'm Itadel's girlfriend. So right away, I'm thinking scam. I'm like, okay, now this, this is part two. So if Sharon's going to call me now, should I get the other $500? So I'm like, yeah. So I said, where's Itadel? I said, you know, I said, I haven't heard from him. I said, you know, he worked, did this work. She goes, no, no, I know, I understand. And I apologize, but let me explain. Itadel got arrested. So right away... I took it as bullshit. I was like, I was like, come on, man. I said, really? And he got arrested. Like, this dude looked like a nerd. Like, he was a skinny Indian kid with glasses, man. This dude didn't look like he can hurt a fly. Like, he would, I, I don't even think he cursed. I mean, this dude was a straight up, straight up nerd. So, I didn't believe it at all. So, then she, she continued. She goes, yeah, and they're going to deport him. So, I'm like, oh, this is a real scam. So, this is my way, their way of getting me to never even look for him anymore because not only is he going to be arrested he's going to be deported he's going to be sent back to India so I'm I'm already, I don't believe this girl and then she tells me, she goes I said, alright, so so what happened? you know, how did this, like, well, I couldn't I could sit here for hours and you guys could probably do the same and try to come up for a, a, with a, a reason why this dude would even get arrested why would he get arrested? So, so this is what happened. He was at his girlfriend's house. No, yeah, he was at his girlfriend's house. No, no, let me fix this. He went to his girlfriend's house and her ex-boyfriend's car was parked in the driveway. So when he saw it, he pulled out the club, you know, the club for the steering wheel. So he pulled the club out of his car and he bashed in all the windows of the guy's car. The guy had just supposedly gone to his ex-girlfriend's house to give her something or to bring her something, I forgot. But Itadel didn't give it a chance to find out why. I mean, I couldn't really blame him. I, I don't know. Maybe I would've done the same, I don't know. But anyway, he busted all the windows. It became a big thing. The guy called the cops. They arrested. Itadel, and then they figured out that he was here illegally. And supposedly he was in this country for 15 years. I believe he said 15 years. Spoke perfect English, as 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 good as an Indian kid usually speaks. You know, had an accent. Um, and I still didn't believe her. And she said, if you don't believe me, type in his full name into the Mecklenburg County Jail and into the search, the inmate search. And so I did that. And I saw the charges. I think it was uh, assault, assault to property, damage to property. I forgot what they called it. And then it said something. There was another thing in there, another table in there that said something like preparation for deportation or prepares for deportation or something to that extent that made it legit that this dude was getting deported. I couldn't believe it. I said, Oh my God, how can this be? I went back on Craigslist. I tried to look for somebody else. They were, I couldn't find anybody. And, and I remember it was during this time, the station was giving me a hard time too because the bandwidth wasn't, long, wasn't wide enough and we kept getting dropouts. Like I couldn't hold enough people. Like all the people that I wanted on there, I couldn't even hold them. And when we were doing like, uh, we would do these live like broadcast at some of the shows we have to set up a internet line a, a phone cable to go from like somewhere in the club all the way it'd be 200 a 200 foot cable going to the office where we would plug into the phone line oh man and there was no way of it was just a, the signal was horrible it was a lot of dropouts it was and after this happened with Itadel, it was right before the Freestyle Music Awards. I remember I just, 
I closed the doors. I shut the doors on the station. I just really was really sour about it. I just didn't want to deal with it anymore. Um, and I, I left it alone. I also had the guy who was actually running it for me. He kind of, him and I kind of fell out. So, um, you know, so it, it was like, so I was just really sad. I just didn't want to mess with it. I knew eventually I would, I would grab it back because I held on to the name. I held on to the domain. I, so I knew eventually I would, uh, I would bring it back on. And, and, and I did. We ended up bringing it back on, I believe, I believe it was 2010, maybe. I don't know. I thought it was 2010. Fernando would know better. <laughs> so, um, and we've been going ever since. We've been going, but we have a whole bunch of new things that we're working on. But when you get a chance, it's LaRadioLive.com or just go on to Latif Mercado. Actually, forget about the LaRadioLive.com. Go to LatifMercado.com, find the La Radio link. Boom. Click, uh, click on that. And it'll bring you right to the station. And, you know, it is really cool. And we have an app for that. We have an app for Android and for iPhone. Um, and they're legitimate, real, real apps. They're custom. They're not like generic where anybody can use them. They, they're ours. They were created for us. Um, so you can load those onto your phone, and I do suggest that you do that. And it's cool because you could be anywhere you want. You can click on it and sit back and listen to Freestyle 24-7. We got a lot of cool stuff. I think if you listen to it for like one day or just kind of geek out on it a little bit, I think you'll, you'll dig it. You'll dig the quality, and you'll like, and you'll see some of the stuff that we're doing. So, But anyway, I just wanted to talk about that a little bit, You know, give you guys a heads up that there is a freestyle station that plays 24-7. We are a legitimate part of this industry. So the money that La Radio Live runs on is, is money that's made from this business. So the business actually finances the station. So there's a lot of stations out there. A lot of these guys, bless their hearts, they got regular jobs. And that's great. They're doing they're doing a wonderful justice. I don't want them to go anywhere. I think we need as many stations as possible. Uh, but they might have their regular jobs. Some of them are cops, teachers, janitors, construction dudes, whatever the case may be. Um, and they're making their money at their job and they're taking it and they're financing the radio station. Us, we finance the station with freestyle money, 100%. So it kind of gives it a little bit more adds a little more blood to the you know to the package so i just want to bring that out because i think it's important i really think it's important um and I, but I want you guys to check it out please and um you know find a way of let me know what you think okay so listen so we're gonna go um it's saturday night i think i'm gonna go check out a movie it's really late i started watching the irishman pretty good movie uh i love all those actors they try to make De Niro uh, look a little younger than he really is. Uh, I don't know if they, I don't think they succeeded, but he still rocked it. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm getting used to it. But anyway, I'm going to go back and, and finish the movie up. But listen, be safe if you guys are going out tonight. If you're already on your way out, whatever the case may be, be cool. Thanks again for everything and good night, Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.